because I was I was ashamed of what I was. Man, you don't know that I'm in pain all the time, you know. I can say that to me at that point, I, I felt like I'm dead. Welcome back, Lucid Tribe, to another video. Uh, you might want to grab a coffee or something to snack on because this video is full of juices. Pun intended. <laughs> okay, guys, quick disclaimer before we start this video. I don't know Lazar Angelo personally. I only know what he's been through by the video that he posted that we're gonna discuss about today. I have nothing against him, nothing. I have nothing against bodybuilding. There's nothing to come after here. But the reason I'm making this video is because I found a great opportunity through his story, through what he uh, shared to pass on some messages that are very, very important to keep in mind when you are in the fitness world or you are in a discipline, a sport, or you are practicing something physically or mentally. Everything can be applied that you learn today and we will discuss. And I've been through this myself because I've been through various sports. I have done very many different things in my life physically. And I've also learned these things the hard way through injuries, through depression. I know what thoughts feel like. I've been through all this shit so I can relate so much to Lazar's story. And I think it's very powerful uh, to share these things early on. Strap on, get ready because this is gonna be a bomb. So drop that like, like button, <laughs> how they say that. Plus subscribe if you haven't already. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> wow, man, I feel so stupid saying all these things, but they help me, okay? You know what to do, everybody's saying what to do. So if you feel like this is an honest video and you get some value from it, please consider supporting uh, by sharing and doing all the clickable things, okay? Let's get to it. Well, I think it all started in the, in the end of 2014, but I didn't accept it. I started having pain in my, my tendons, in the forearms. Uh, I remember that uh, I was training with pain every day, but I was at that point of my life, I couldn't imagine to stop training, you know? Mm -hmm. I was, th this was my life, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it is my life now. It was uh, my life back then. I couldn't, I remember that I couldn't imagine even to stop for one or two days just mm -hmm. to rest. And, uh, I was, I continued to, to train with pain every day, every day I was going to gym. I was, I, I was, I had pains before, mm -hmm. but it was different because the pain was getting even worse, worse, worse every day. So in the beginning of 2015, I decided to stop. Okay, so he's starting the story by saying, you know, how his body was giving him signs, signals that, you know, error, something is wrong. You are doing something repeatedly wrong and I can't take it anymore. And that's your body's, I mean, we have to understand that the body, everything it does is only signaling and giving feedback with the goal of keeping you alive, of keeping you healthy. So when you are uh, in pain, when you see that your skin is ripping, blah, 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 blah. These are all signs that all of us uh, have experienced and know that, okay, I might be dehydrated. Hey, I need to rest a bit more. I need to sleep a bit more. All these things and it comes in waves, you know, your body at the beginning might be signaling something in, in, a, in a way like a feather would touch you. You would feel the feather touch you, uh, you would notice it, but you could easily move on, you know. That's the first sign when something is wrong in many ways. And um, for those that are really connected with their body, they understand and they listen, you know. It, the term listen to your body um, is been thrown around so many times but who are actually listening and who are actually listening and then doing something about it. So in Angelo's case his body was slowly um, signaling that something is wrong. What did he do? Nothing, right? Um, so it doesn't mean 
that if you are physical uh, in your life that you know how to listen to your body that's something you have to learn and sometimes you learn it the hard way because like I said it comes like a feather if you ignore it it comes like like a slap in your face okay uh, that's the translation and usually the slap in the face uh, is usually enough to change the direction pause for a moment reflect and and think okay what is wrong here I can't do what I used to do in this movement I can't do this specific thing um, and that's when you have to move different in order to have different results right uh, if you're just repeatedly doing the same thing nothing will change that's a law that's a fact okay and the thing with bodybuilding is that your identity becomes your aesthetic look which is I mean imagine how poor of an orientation that is and how sick it must be to to train only to get approval of how you look not how much you lift not what you can functionally do with your body all these things but your orientation your whole investment of time is around looking a certain way and here it's very important to say out loud that you know that from the day we get born we are dying and decreasing day by day that's a fact we will die someday and yeah to a certain point you can build so much muscle but after a certain point that muscle to be maintained will only be harder okay and there's a lot to say about this but let's keep our focus on to muscles are temporary so if you are building your whole ca career or your whole identity around something that is temporary that's that's a shitty orientation right that's like building a house on fucking uh, bamboo instead of something very steady it's gonna collapse at some point slowly but i stopped training i started physiotherapy and the pain was staying there so i couldn't train for months you know weeks before we became months i continued to train legs and i would just train legs i would train them heavier because uh, they were my weak part and probably on the second or third uh, workout my legs started hurting hurting also i started physio uh, physio wasn't helping i remember that at some point the pain in my former arms was so bad i couldn't use my phone i couldn't pick up a glass i couldn't uh, use the mouse i couldn't use the keyboard so i was you know i, I couldn't do anything in life you, you were presented with the option to do either physiotherapy or yeah, surgery but I, I did physiotherapy for months and it mm -hmm. didn't help and uh, i think one of my mistakes was that I totally stopped doing, uh, you know, all kind of exercises, mm -hmm. you know, and from because at that point of my life, I couldn't imagine to train at 50, 60 percent. You know, I was always training at 100. And can you imagine like going every day to, to, to be the best? And at some point you you, you go and say, oh, I'm going to train at 50 percent. I'm going to train at 20 percent. I'm going to lift light weights. I just couldn't. My mindset at that point was like that. He then ignores his pain, he disrespects his body so much to a point even though it's signaling every damn day I'm hurting, do something, change something, please, I'm hurting and he ends up to the point where he can't even write on the freaking um, keyboard he can't even write a hate comment, he can't even do anything right? And you remember the feather example? Well, there's the feather, there's the slap in the face, and then there's the brick falling from the sky up upon your head. And that's when the body are signaling that things are dangerous, okay? Things are getting close to irreversible. And that's when we start to experience, you know, personality change, identity change, because you have to accept reality. You have to accept that, hey, you are so injured in your shoulder that surgery might not do it for you. Uh, you might not come 100% back. And that's when you hit a wall. And 
Some lose their identity, they lose themselves totally because they have invested everything they've got in one boat. And that boat sinks. So what do you do? No idea. I have, I have not learned how to live my life without being on this boat. I have always been on this boat. I have never tried anything new. I have never invested time in something new in my life. And that, that has a big, big cost on the other side, right? Physio wasn't helping. So the only option was to do surgeries. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I underestimated the surgeries because I never had surgeries before. I told that you make a surgery and that, you know, doctor said after three months, you're ready to go. But they didn't tell me how important was uh, the actual recovery period. Yeah, so I underestimated the whole situation. Uh, even though after that, I did, I did four surgeries in a couple of months. I'm, I'm going to come back really fast. You know, I'm strong. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't care. You know, if, if other people came back from that shit, I can come back, do me one after another. You know, this was also a mistake as I'm looking at it now. Um, and I started doing these uh, surgeries and I, I, I remember that recovery period wasn't going the way it, sh it should be. Like I was still having pain. Even though it was a slower process, I was I started going to the gym, and um, I started to get my shape back. Um, I think it was too fast. I, I had pain, but I was pushing, you know, because that's the only way I know. And probably for six months, I got to a certain shape, which uh, which was probably 70, 80 percent of what I was before. And uh, I couldn't do a lot of exercises, you know, I couldn't do the same weights as before, but I was, you know, still training. And do four surgeries. Do you understand what that means? Four surgeries at the same time, knees and biceps or whatever that was. Not to mention, you know, when when you cut through your body and open it up. For many, many years, we thought that the body is just muscles, tendons, ligaments, soft tissue, and bones, right? What we found out is that this body we are in is also fascia, which is like, considered like a plastic bag that are connecting the whole body so when I do this on my shirt, you see that I pull here, but my shirt is moving all the way down there. Okay? If I cut my shirt here, boop, this connection will be lost. Your whole body will become unbalanced. But for sure, you don't want to rush through this. You want to listen and you want to learn by the past mistakes. Instead of Angelo, he did the surgery, respect respect to the guy that he went through all this pain all this frustration and who knows what what was he was battling with at the same time in his personal life and he had to uh, you know keep alive this identity of this aesthetic god this gifted genetic freak right uh, so man respect to you if you're watching this i'm giving you full Respect. We have to understand something very important here that uh, I learned the hard way, but this video is not about me. It's not about Lazar. It's about getting something powerful through, okay? The human body is so complex uh, that you basically have a whole universe between your ears, okay? It's so complex that we know shit about it. And that's a fact. Okay, and many many resources can approve this and tell that we are only learning and we are only scratching a surface here. So, when you go to a physical therapist uh, or a therapist, a psychology, psychiatry, whatever you, you do, you are going with your own body, yourself, 
having an issue to the doctor or the physiotherapist and being like, I experienced this, help me. So usually why we do this is because we don't want to take responsibility or we don't have the knowledge of how to take responsibility of our body. So we take our problem and we're like, please take this. I can't stand it. I don't know what to do with this. With this, it, it brings me only sadness and, and chaos in my mind and my feelings, okay? But the thing is that any specific therapist can only use their knowledge and information from their point of view. With that, what I'm trying to say is that going to a doctor or a physio, they can look at your injury or your problem like looking through a straw instead of holistically. Because, you know, have you ever experienced psychosomatic pain uh, or so many other things that are re related to your environment? Your, the climate change, your psychology of how you feel, the people that you are surrounded with, all this shit, okay? All this shit are layers that are adding up to something that are wrong with you. There might be something physically wrong with you, but that can be caused by so many parameters. So, just know that a physio can only help you until one certain point. I wasn't happy because I couldn't be, I couldn't train the same way as I was training before. And, you know, people wanted me to show how I train at the moment, mm -hmm. but I, I wasn't happy with the way I trained because let's say I was training with the 60, 70% of the weight, I, of the weights I was training before, because I was always training as heavy as I can. So the, I think the, the the size that I got back was mainly from you know muscle memory, you know it wasn't from very heavy workouts. So even at that point in my life, I I got my shape back like eighty percent, but I wasn't happy with with my life, you know. And then I remember that uh, I went to so many expos, and uh, once I, I was in Russia for one expo. And uh, I saw one comment on my Instagram. So it was a guy that says, oh, you look good, but you don't look like before. It's not like you were. Yeah, which was actually the truth. But I was mad because he, did, he, he doesn't know how I feel. You know, people just look at you and they say, oh, you don't look like before the same as before. You're not the same. But man, you don't know that I'm in pain all the time, you know. And uh, that's what made me mad. And I said, I'm going to show them that I'm the best in this thing because certainly they forgot, right? So I'm going to stay home. I'm going to focus on my shape because I look like shit now. And after three months, I'm going to show you how great I am. So I start training and doing the same stuff again. But this time 100%? At 100%, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, I remember I, I trained like that for, for three months, not more. And not, not three months, but three weeks. And the pain started coming again, even worse. Like, it, like the pain in the tendons, it started spread around the, the whole body. So it, it went from your forearms to your entire body? Yeah, to, from the forearms to the triceps to the chest, you know. And it, it, it was everywhere, on the, on the legs also. And at that point of my life, it was the, the, probably the hardest because I went through all that shit with the surgeries. I wasn't happy even though I came back to some extent. And now I had to stop again. At that point, it, uh, everything was gray. So this freaking beast got back to his 80% uh, aesthetic shape after all the surgeries but was not happy. Why? Because in his mind he had to prove people that I'm this guy, you know, this perfectly aesthetic person um, doing all these things. Uh, and of course you can be happy, but he was focusing at that point on all the wrong things instead of 
thinking and just being grateful for the fact that he can go into a gym, into a gym, lift weight, do all these things. And as we will see later, <laughs> he started to realize this slowly. It took some time, but he started realizing, you know, by watching other people go to the gym and just work out, how lucky they were to have this ability, to have this option to go and use their body and use their time that way and um, and do this thing that he, he's so passionate about. But at that time, after the four surgeries, after all this amount of pain that he went through, he could, he was back to a point, but he was just not the same, but he could not be grateful for the fact that he was that way. And the pain came back, so I had to stop, you know, and the pain start, uh, started uh, spreading all over my, my body. So I was even worse than before. And after so many surgeries, I didn't know what, what, what to do now. Like I did uh, four surgeries. So what I have to do surgeries again, you know, I know what it costed me and they didn't help that much, you know, so what is now? I started, I was, I was desperate because I started going to different type of doctors all over the world. I, I was just, I, at that point I was making good money. So I, I was spending like this. I, I just wanted to get my life back as, you know, as before. What obstacles you encountered in your everyday life so we can get an idea? It still limits you to, to do workouts because when you go to train, like it's tendonitis. Right? Mm -hmm. And when you go to train, it gets worse after, after the training. That's the thing. So, and uh, the thing is that I had it all over my body. So it was limiting for me for, for everything. You know, I couldn't do anything in the gym. That, that, that was the problem. And uh, once... For me, one, once I stopped going to the gym, uh, it was totally depression. You know, I didn't know what to do with my life. That that was the hard part because uh, I realized that all my life I was doing sports. You know, and this is the only way I know to live: to wake up every morning and to you know chase my dreams, to, to try and become better than yesterday. And once. I had this, all these problems, I couldn't do this anymore. So I didn't know why, why should I live? What's the point of everything? I can say that to me at that point, I, I felt like I'm dead and that's it. Like, I don't, I don't feel like I'm living, you know? So adding upon the story until now, uh, injuries have been the biggest teacher, I think for all of us. Anybody that have been injured can relate to this, knowing that, you know, the time that they were injured was the time that sucked the most, right? But it has also been the time with the biggest growth, the most amount of uh, progression personally inside yourself, you know, the way you approach, the way you think, everything, right? Um, and I wanted to say that Muscles go, they, get, they disappear, right? Athleticism, um, all these records, everything, the high jumps, whatever you are into and whatever you can do right now. I can sign anywhere you want, it will not be there forever. What stays forever is the thoughts that you get through your training is all the mindsets and everything that the discipline or whatever training you were into taught you when you were doing it. And that's what, what's the gold. That's what stays with you forever, even when you are 80, 90 years old. And that's when, that's wisdom, okay? That's what will help you navigate through this life. So instead of letting the muscles define who you are, or the looks define who you are. The thoughts and the mindset should define who you are. I have nothing to show for. Me? Yeah, okay, I can do many things with my body. I have a slap tear in my, in my shoulder. I can't do push-ups anymore, for now. 
I'm definitely doing everything in my powers and knowledge of trying to come back. But my injury taught me everything I know. The hard way. And I'm super sad that I'm not completely Jonathan anymore. But I'm not defined by that. I'm defined by how I think, how I reflect, and how I approach things with my mindset. That's who I am. Wow, I got pretty serious there, man. <laughs> Woo! Let's, let's calm down, everybody. <laughs> Oof. I hope this guy, this is valuable, guys. I hope this is valuable. I wish somebody could come and tell me all this earlier. <laughs> I wish. Thank <music> you.